Hello, mate. I'd rev it and impress you. This is one of the least impressive revs I've ever heard. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. That sounds farty. Oh yeah. Someone will be out in a minute. And they'll say, what are you doing here? And I'll go, there's a peacock, there's a peacock. <laughs> I won't do that to them, that'd be weird. There's a peacock now. Oh, oh, how I love to fight. There's, there's neutral. Wait. Wait. Right, off you go for a minute. Testies, testies. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. Three testes? Yeah, what's your problem? What's beef? Some people do have three testes. I'm back, baby, here again, with another exciting review. Two of them, two reviews. Sit back, grab a coffee, and enjoy. Or don't. Ladies and gents, welcome to a brusque autumn morning. Yeah, it's October, it's autumn. And welcome indeed to the BMW G310. Oh, currently the smallest bike they do. An inch here, beaut. As always, I need to just explain what specifications and specs we have for the vehicle. And one would think, to make this smoother, I would have logged in in advance, but no. Good. So the BMW, what we have is a 310, which is actually a 313. It develops 34 brake horsepower at 9,500 revs. And it develops 20 foot-pounds of torque at 7,500 reps. Which means that it, although it is a single, and it has quite a lot of torque down low, it is still fun to hold on to those reps and climb up to 9,500. For dimensions, it is 785 millimeters. You can actually make it a little bit lower. One of the options that you can go for is a slightly smaller seat if you're a little bit smaller in stature. It's quite a light bite. Bite? It is quite a light bike. It's an aperitif before you go on to something bigger. It's 158 kilograms for curb weight, which means it has fluids in it, which is a sensible way to measure it because no one rides a bike without fluids in it. You simply can't. It has a tubular space frame. Their term, not mine. Sounds like something a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle would say. But it's on their website. Go and have a look. See? I made a money. It has brake discs, that is good, because you will need to stop. It has one on the front, and that is 300 millimeters in size. And it has one on the back, which is 240 millimeters in size. It is, of course, equipped with ABS, as all new bikes are. It also has quite good brake calipers. Now they are Brebri, Brebri. They are basically Brembos, but by a cheaper name. They're the budget Brembos, put it that way. They're four piston and they are radial mounted. They also come with braided hoses. So the feel that you actually get from the levers is quite nice and responsive. Or the lever and your foot. The suspension is fairly basic. You can adjust the preload on the back and that is it. Very basic, very functional suspension. The dash is quite good, uncluttered. It's digital, fully digital, and it is not colour. They haven't overcomplicated it, which I like. In the UK, the bike also comes in at £4,450, which is an actual bargain. Properly. Good bargain. Now then, let's talk about the actual bike itself. It is very user-friendly. It is not scary, really. It's very manageable. It's quite accurate. It's quite composed. It's quite comfortable. There were a few little niggles which I will get onto, but all said and done, it's a very nice bike. And a very good starting point if you're just getting into biking. And go. It does sing quite high. It does make more talk when you do get up high, which is good. Quite enjoyable. The only thing you'll notice is that being a single, obviously it's vibrating a lot more when you're rocking around those revs. 
It's got enough power to overtake, but I'm not the most trusting of it. It farts when you do this. If you do look at the dyno on it, you'll see that the torque is pretty level and that the horsepower does rev up to nine and a half. So we start with the engine. It's a single. Even though it is a single, it's quite smooth and you can rev it up and actually race up to 60 miles an hour quite happily, 60, 70. It's still fine and it actually doesn't even vibrate that much through the motor, which is impressive because singles can vibrate when you get up high in speed, not necessarily just the revs. It is fun to play all through the rev range. It's actually really smooth all the way up. There was a marginal difference when it gets to its power band, 7,500 for torque, 9,500 for horsepower. You play around there, you can feel that it's slightly more responsive, it's a little bit quicker, but it pretty much pulls from way down low all the way up to that 9,000 mark. That picks up as fast as you need. It's not punch you out of the seat fast. Runs out a bit when you get up past 60 miles an hour. The funny thing, funny to me, join me if you will, the top speed of this thing, 88.5 miles an hour. Which means that it is just fast enough to go back in time. Boom, mind blown. It's a smidge faster than a DeLorean, just keep that in your mind. It's also quite efficient. The fuel economy isn't bad on the BMW either. As I say, it's supposed to get roughly 205 miles to a full tank. The tank is 11 litres, that gives you a fuel economy of 85 miles per gallon. I say that, that's obviously from BMW, and manufacturers do tend to um, lie or they tend to be optimistic with the fuel range of their vehicles and with a lot of things. They want to make it sound as good as they possibly can, so they do tend to err on the side of optimism. The one thing about the engine that I would bring up as a niggle, the throttle is a little bit vague. And I guess you'd have to try it to really understand what I mean by that, but it just doesn't have much connection between the engine speed, your speed, and your wrist. It was still buttery smooth though for down changes, even to the point where obviously you can blip the throttle and try and change down quite smoothly. It's not listed as having a slipper clutch, so you could potentially, with less cylinders in an engine, you've got the possibility of locking that rear if you just mash down gears, but even if you're not the best at down changes, you shouldn't really have too much of a problem. It still goes into gears quite smoothly. The clutch is quite smooth. It is a cabled clutch. It is not hydraulic. But that's fine, it's feather light. The only thing I'm finding is changing up gears. Because that is quite vague, it's giving me a little shud. Shud? Shove, you know, English. Shove forward when I'm changing up gears. If we're going back to gears, actually there was another flaw that I found from that. And again, found this with the KTM also. Not to compare them too much right now, but getting into neutral, very nearly impossible. Ah, <laughs> there's second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, neutral, from second. Wait. No, nope, that's second. It does not want to go into neutral from first, which is an issue. But hey, maybe it's a German thing. Let's just see. Yes, yes, it will find neutral from second and not from first. It's not a German thing. German engineering is usually much better than that. Any which way, it is quite irritating with this little thing. I don't know what it is. It feels solidly built. It feels like it shouldn't have a problem. Maybe it's just this bike in particular, and it's not an issue with the rest of the fleet. Hey, I can only tell you from my experience on this one. It has ABS, as all modern bikes do. Of course, it is Euro 4 compliant, so that's why it's got that silly big end can and ABS on the brakes but the brakes are quite responsive. The fact that it's got braided hoses means that you've got great feel through your fingers and through your foot. It's got plenty of stopping power. It's a light bike. The ergonomics of the vehicle are quite nice. You are pushed thrust quite far forward. It has quite a steep angle on the steering as well. It also is quite a short wheelbase. Now I'd ridden an hour to get there in the first place 
and I was starting to ache on my bike. I got on that bike and actually felt quite refreshed and didn't even ache by the end of my test ride, which again, was an hour. So that goes to show that it is quite a comfortable place to be. The seat is also really quite comfortable. And I've said that on other bikes as well, but what I quite like on this one is that Unlike with quite a lot of bikes, the Yamaha in particular, where it is a bit of a bench seat, this one actually has a backstop. And it's a really good, really comfortable backstop actually, so it keeps your bum firmly in place. You're not going to fly off the back with all that prodigious power that it's got in the engine. Boop, 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 boop. And go down. You do feel a little perched. I am quite upright. It is a really short wheelbase quite a short bike but to balance that off they have got a longer swing arm which makes it composed and actually it does feel really nice and composed even at 60 miles an hour. Now I don't want to be mean about the sound of the BMW G310 but I'm going to be mean. My recommendation is that when you buy it there are certain modifications you can buy. Heated grips not a bad choice if you're going to be riding through the winter especially if you get them from the manufacturer, because you can get aftermarkets like Oxford, but they don't really work nearly as well as buying from the actual manufacturer. You would also possibly want to get your little um, charge socket port. It depends if you're going to be out and you need to charge your phone whilst you're riding around. Not a bad investment though. The seat's not a bad investment either, because obviously if you are a little bit shorter, you might want to make that a bit shorter for yourself. I'd also get an aftermarket exhaust, because the one on the BMW, Sounds like a wet fart. Oh, pardon me. Oh, it was the beans this morning. So I think it's fair to say that I really did enjoy my time on the BMW. And I think it is also fair to say that I would recommend buying one. And if you are starting out on bikes in this country or any other, it is a good machine to choose, to grow with, to learn from. It is really well priced. It undercuts the market beautifully. Well done, Beamer. Well done, BMW. You know what you've done. And it is also BMW quality engineering. And it's genuinely good fun. In a lot of ways, in a lot of different ways, this is the perfect town bike. Because you can go out and have some fun on some country lanes, but in a town, she'll plod along happily. Even being a single cylinder, quite smooth. Now, if you want to see how it compares against the KTM, I have a review of that coming soon. So you can see directly what my impressions were of both bikes tested within a few days of each other. Or if you just wanna see how the KTM is as a bike, then I also have a review of that again coming soon. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. It really does help out. I genuinely appreciate it. And I promise I will have more videos coming to you soon. Ta-ta. can't really see an awful lot of it but at least you've got some kind of indication of what you're doing I and mean, the indication really is the fact that you're getting an erection from the uh, vibration just coming through the bike it's like sitting on a washing machine i know that's classic i know that's unnecessary clearly my mind has started to drift <laughs> it's funny though semi-true and by that i mean i have a semi not a full-blown like this. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Just lifting weights while I go.